What's up, guys? I'm Chuck. You're in the loop. Let's go to worship. Like a crash of thunder Like a river tearing toward the sea Your love is spilling over Flooding every desert part of me And it feels like I'm coming alive, coming alive I can't stop, I can't help Dancing like I got no shame No more fear, no more doubt Never gonna be the same Eyes on you, won't look back Follow you into the deep Living like I've been set free Your love is wild, wild find our identity in the things or the people that are around us. You know, we can find our identity in our friends that we hang out with, or maybe it's the sports we play or in our ability to perform. Anything that we're really great at can easily become our identity. But you know, the problem with that is that the minute that that changes or it's taken away from us, we lose our identity. The Bible actually tells us that we're made in the image of God. We're made to love and to worship Him. And because God never changes, our identity is safe and secure in Him. And so we can worship Him from that truth today, knowing that we are who we are because of who Christ is. Worshiping God isn't what we do. It's a part of who we are. So let's worship Him today, knowing that we know who we are because of who Christ is.
What was your favorite worship song that we just sang? I would love to hear what it is. Go ahead and put it down in the comments below. Hey, if you're not watching with somebody already, go grab a family member, go grab somebody and watch this episode together. Hey, I got a question for you. Would you like it if your shadow could talk to you? That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Like that thing that follows you around if it suddenly was just like, hey, what's up? I don't have a shadow right now and that's kind of freaking me out a little bit, but I think it's gonna be okay. Hey, think about what your answer to that question would be. Put it down in the comments below, okay? I'm gonna go try and find my shadow real quick, okay? Kind of freaking out guys i can't find my shadow but let's just go to this episode of the loop show uh it's all about using your influence to lead others ricky and jamie are going to do a guess the shadow challenge um i'm gonna go try and find mine hey welcome to loop show i'm tommy and before we hang on for any loops i was asked to come out and shoot straight with you you may notice that our loop show desk is missing and there's a rumor going around that we got rid of it because it smelled like honey and dead squid. That's simply not true. Truth is, our desk moved to Hollywood and got a job on a sitcom called Uh-Oh, Dad's a Desk. We'll always be able to say that we knew that desk back when it was covered in cheese whiz. We wish you well, desk. Now, who's ready for a new season? Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And uh, you're trying on a new style, I see. Oh, this. Yes, I've been watching old episodes and I see how great you look in hats, obviously. So you influenced me to start wearing more hats. That's such an honor, Jamie. I didn't know I had influence. You do and I do. We all have influence. But are we all influencers? Ooh, good question. Let's take a look at this. When I was growing up, an influencer was often a teacher. It was a coach. A good parent was an influencer. A good friend was an influencer. Someone who led a Sunday school class was an influencer. And today, unfortunately, culture has hijacked the term and many people say, well, an influencer is a celebrity. It is a content creator. It's someone who's amassed a great number of followers on social media. What I wanna to try to do today is I wanna to try to reclaim the word influencer. And I want you to see yourself as an influencer because you have no idea how our God could use one word of encouragement that you give to someone else, one moment or one expression of faith to change someone else's life. For those of you that are disciples of Jesus, I wanna show you exactly what Jesus says you are. He uses two metaphors in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter five, he says, you're also the light of the world, you're shiny. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. It just shines. Darkness never overcomes the light. And Jesus says, you are light. In the same way, Jesus says, let your light shine before others. Let your love influence people toward Jesus. Let your light shine that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's reclaim the true meaning of what it is to be an influencer. I guess I didn't realize how much influence I have on the people around me. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, even Mystery Hand is influenced by your style. Okay, I should really be careful with all this influence. I wanna make sure that it's shining a light. Mm -hmm. Speaking of shining a light, let's check out this challenge. Yes, <laughs> it's the Do You Know That Shadow Challenge. Can you guess the items behind the sheet based off their shadow? The winner gets a bright, delightful smoothie. The not winner gets a shadow smoothie. Oh no. Ugh. I bet there's like liquid smoke in that or something. Shadow smoothie sounds so ominous. Oh, it's the modeling figure that we have on the set with a cassette tape. That was going to be my exact guess. <laughs> oh, hey! ow! Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> yep, sure can. <laughs> it's the last image I'll ever see. Did I win? Oh, if you cover up the light, you can see it. Ah, uh, it is indeed the modeling figure with a cassette tape. Hooray! Next thing, please. Oh! 
Oh, it's, it's the Jack in the Box with the toothbrush. The one that scared me. Ah, and the trophy. Ah, oh, darn it. It's the Jack in the Box holding a trophy and a toothbrush. I was going to make an additional guess, but ha ha, hey! I recognize that guy. No, he scared me. Know thy enemy. All right, so we are one to one. You one have a point, one. I have a point. I have to be faster than Jamie. Okay, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for a full rotation. Okay. It's a coconut with a little arm crutch in it. Oh, Jamie, I think you need to really look at what coconuts look like. <laughs> uh, or a beanie, a little beanie. Or it's a coconut. <laughs> I'm going to say it is fishing bait inside of a vase. Fishing bait inside of a... I feel like I can't give up on the coconut now. So. If it's a coconut, I will I'll scream. So let's see. <laughs> I don't think I've been more angry. <laughs> Let's see that next slide. <laughs> He's so angry. There's a coconut. Uh, apparently coconuts can look like whatever you want it to look like. There's chicken feet. This is a fashionable uh, chicken <laughs> dinosaur. Chickasaur. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and um, it is wearing a feather boa. I'm gonna stick with my American bald eagle with a bit of pine tree. My, my final guess is it is a bird and or relating to a bird. Show me that bird. Oh, no, it's an no. owl with a duster. Okay, Whoa. so since I said it first, now that the sheet is up and neither of us were wrong. <laughs> Point. <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> I said a bird of any kind. And I said feather boa and feathers. So the panel of judges have ruled that I got that point on a, a, a technicality and um, mostly God's grace. So we're tied. We <laughs> okay. are tied. That's the we're important tied. thing. And this is going to be the tiebreaker. So show me that shadow. Oh, it is a flashlight with a fake rubber snake wrapped around the handle. It is a flashlight with a top hat. No, a teacup is a teacup. Oh, I think I've lost. Bring me my shadow smoothie. <laughs> show me that shadow. <laughs> I won! He did. He I won! won. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, that was good. So we all have influence, but how do we use it? Hey, what's up, Luke? My name is James, and today we're talking about influence, right? So what is influence? Influence is nothing new. It's using what you have, what you think, and who you are to get people to follow you. So imagine this. Imagine I just gave you a YouTube channel with one million subscribers, right? That's your audience. What would you say to them? What would you want them to do? How would you influence them? All right, now imagine I gave you one person that was going through a hard time, they were in need. What would you say to them? What would you want them to do? How would you influence them? So here's the deal, if you want to have influence or be an influencer, there is no one better to learn from than Jesus. Why? Because Jesus lived 2,000 years ago and he still, to this day, has more followers than anybody on Instagram or on YouTube, right? 2,000 years ago, those things weren't even invented yet and Jesus still has the most influence of anybody in history. So Jesus was God in human form. That means he had all the power in the universe but he never forced people to follow him. Instead, what Jesus did is he gained his influence by helping people that were hurting, by meeting their needs with mercy and with grace. The more Jesus met people's needs, the more his influence grew and the more people wanted to follow him because people's lives were being changed for the better. So when the world gets dark, shine your light with mercy and grace. Use your influence like Jesus did. Use your influence to help other people, to serve those that are in need. Use your influence to not just build up your brand, but to build up other people. Now, you don't need a big audience to be an influencer. All you need is one person that you can help, and we all have that one person. So today, choose to be an influencer. Choose to use what you have, what you think, who you are to help someone else. Stand up for a friend in need. Serve your parents be a good brother or sister to your siblings i know it's hard but it's worth it because you have influence as a matter of fact you have more influence than you think you have don't hide it so today how will you shine your light of leadership you are the light of the world like a 
A city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden With no one lights a lamp Puts it on the baskets where no one can see it Instead you take the lamp Put it on the stand where it gives light to everyone in the house Tommy, do I have this much influence? Oh! I'm just wearing this because I saw Mr. Hand wearing it. Ah, he is a trendsetter. All right, Shadow Smoothie. Let's see what One, you got. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's delightful. It's kind of like a, a little uh, sherbet. They just blended up beans and put it in a smoothie, guys. <laughs> it's now, starting to drip down the side. The beans are escaping! <laughs> now, now, Jamie, explain to us um, what blended and smoothie uh, black beans taste like. It's so gross. I'm like so sad right now. <laughs> Would it taste better if you were drinking it from the coconut cup? That'll make me feel a little bit better. All right. <laughs> it still tastes bad. So I'm being told there are beans, there are olives, and there are licorice chunks. And, and I assume all of them together can't taste great. No. I'm chewing it. I'm chewing my smoothie. Look how long it's taking to like, ugh, you can actually hear it drip. Gross. Beans for days. Turn it around, look at how chunky it is on the side. Oh, there's like a huge chunk of black beans here that I don't think got blended up very well. Hey, listen, Jamie, in solidarity, we will just drink yeah. as much as we can for like five seconds, okay? Okay. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> All right, one, two, Three. It's, it's really sweet, you know? It's like almost too sweet, kind of. Um, I, how, how about you, Jamie? Ah, oh, I'm no! Down. Oh, Jamie, no! To spill the beans, how does it taste? Uh, it, it's really, really awful. You, you kind of have like a, got a little... A uh, goatee? Yeah. I mean, if we're, if we're going for it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'm trying to, oh, it did try lip, it did try lip, it did And, oh, and did. now it joins your little, your little chin beard. <sighs> look, 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 look at, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great, JB. Uh, I have my pinky up, like this is some kind of fancy oh. drink. <laughs> I think my finger's just trying to get further away from the shadow smoothie. <laughs> so, if we all have light, what do we do with it? There are an infinite number of words in the world, yet only a few of them fit together to tell your story. Those are your words. Use them, own them, write them, say them. Start like this, I was, but God, and now. Tell this story. I was in the dark, but the light came for me, hunted me down, stared me in the heart and said, I dare you to find something better. I promise I won't let you down. Or maybe this is your story. I was exhausted, burnt out on religion, but the light came for me, and now I am free. Our story is incomplete without your chapter. Don't cost us your missing voice. We were commanded, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, we don't believe that good deeds just earn us a pat on the back. We believe good deeds actually shift culture. So we light up, switch on, go out, tell them. 
And with each one that encounters our stories of light, we will shine brighter and brighter in an ever-increasing brilliance until those in darkness are so blinded by the light that the only thing left to do is to join our tribe. See, they're all searching for new beginnings, middles, and brighter endings. You be the storyteller. You have permission from the most quoted storyteller of all time. Listen, it doesn't matter how big the world is, and I'm sorry, but no one cares for any excuse you may think you have. Because what the world is looking for is light, and what you have is light. It's the cure for temptation, lack of fulfillment, the hopelessness, the thwarted plans, and the unexpected affliction for what they think is a good time but only leaves them searching. So yeah, we will look the whole world square in the eye and say to culture, this is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. Because the light came for me, hunted me down, stared me in the heart and said, I dare you to find something better. I promise I won't let you down. And when I couldn't get my act together, the light still covered me. And that is a story worth telling. God is light, and you are the light of the... What in the world? Smoothie? No, the... Whatever that is. Oh, well, Jamie, you have influence too. If there's anything I learned this week, is that you never know what one little thing you might do that might make someone else change the thing that they do. You're right, you need to use your influence wisely. As followers of Jesus, we need to shine our light, serve others. Be a leader, there are people out there that need to see you shine like Jesus. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, ride! the ride! I did not pick up my smoothie, because I am not. No, you don't <laughs> I wanna, know why to drink you it. You don't wanna slosh that around. Also, going back to the coconut thing, so is yeah. that how coconuts grow in the wild? You have influence, and God has chosen you to impact and influence the people around you to shine your light. Whether it's teammates, your siblings, you have that influence. So let me challenge you with this. What is one way this week that you can shine your light to those people around you? Let me pray for us. God, I thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you have given us opportunity for us to shine our light for you. God, I pray that you give each and every one of these students the boldness and the courage to shine their light to those people around you and to use their influence for good. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so excited to see how you use your influence this week. If you wanna take that next step too, you can also get started with a version Bible plan. There's gonna be a link to one in the description right below me. It's called Shiny Influence. We can go through it together here in the loop. Next up, we've got some questions that you can talk through as a family.